Hi, my name is Austin. Today we're going to be ranking Rammstein records from worst to best. It's obviously my personal list, so if you have a different one, tell me what it is. Okay, so I've been a fan of Rammstein for a long time. One of the first heavy metal bands I ever got in. So they've got a special place in my musical journey, I think. And so, you know, it's going to be kind of hard to rank them. But I think there's a definitive line between OK Rammstein records and great Rammstein records. So without further ado, let's go. So I'm gonna kick it off with Rosenrod, their fifth album. It's originally gonna be cut, uh, it's originally gonna be titled uh, Rise of Rise of Volume 2. It's easy to see why. Half the tracks are left over from Rise of Rise, even the title track itself, which essentially sounds like Stein um Stein, but 10 times better. Unfortunately, Rosenrod is probably the best track on the whole thing. The Storen is good too. Hilf Mir is alright. Benzene, you know, sounds like Foy or Fry, but updated, kinda. Rise of Rise of Edge. But uh, yeah, I would just say that this record just feels a little bit tired. It's not by itself. Rise of Rise of Volume 2 is definitely what it sounds like. So I'm gonna have to give it the number 7 spot. After that, I'm gonna put a bit of a controversial next up I suppose which is Rise of Ryza. I put it way lower than most people probably would and uh, I think it's overrated. I think Rise of Ryza is overrated. Um, I'm just looking at my notes obviously. Uh, so yeah the whole point of this one was to create their heaviest record to date and you can see that with tracks like Mind Tile, Kinda Lust, although a little bit radio friendly. Uh, it's still pretty hard hitting, but I think that's the problem with this record is it sounds radio friendly on a dish, you know America, I don't really like them. They're just Not as hard hitting as most Rammstein could be. It seems a little safe and the theme of travel is a little strange Dalai Lama is cool um, But yeah, I'd say it's Rammstein at their most radio rock or their first kind of adventure into that territory so anyway speaking of radio uh yeah speaking of radio get to number five which is the latest record untitled i looked forward to this for a long time long long time 10 years after the last release Libby and um i want to say eight years after made in germany there was a big gap in between those two we got some video releases with in america and then uh, was it Paris, um, which, you know, they're live, it's okay. And we got that cool documentary. But uh, this was the first new music on a record format. And uh, so we got Deutschland, which was the first single. It pumped me up. I love that song. That song is great. In fact, I would even argue it could be a title track to this. But that's one of the weird things about this. All Rammstein songs are 11 songs. All Rammstein albums are 11 tracks long, and they have a title track. This one doesn't, and that kind of makes it a little off-putting, even when I first heard about it. And uh, you can kind of see why. This is just kind of a run-of-the-mill Rammstein, which is surprising. Although it does have a newer edge to it, it's a little bit sharper, it's a little bit uh, more... I'm not sure how to explain it. I want to say like rise rise a bit better <laughs> you know more radio friendly like radio and then we've got some cool songs like psych dish and i love papa or poopa or what i forget i can't speak german right now um yeah those are probably my two favorite songs off the whole thing the rest of it is just simple you know flaka he does the keyboards for most of it and it's a very technological album probably the most after zinbrook so, kind of a letdown, I think, but we got a couple good songs out of it, so nothing too horrible. Um, okay, what's after that? So I'm gonna put Zinzucht at number four. I like this album. It's probably Rammstein's biggest album. Um, obviously with Duhost and then Angles on there. There's some other saucier tracks like Bestrafemisch, Spiel mit mir, which aren't played as much anymore, if at all, but are still very solid tracks and it sounds crunchy it sounds barbaric it's a slippery record and i like how saucy it sounds the studio 
production is saucy. <clears throat> then we've got Book Dish, obviously crowd favorite, fan favorite. It's disturbing. This album is disturbing. It's electronic. It's Rammstein at their most, I want to say, 90s, goth, industrial, whatever. Whatever their plan was, that's what they got. And there's some European techno parts in this. I mean, <laughs> you can just look at the you know track listing and and start it off and the first songs are you know keyboard driven you know so uh yeah I, I like this album it's an industrial power metal house but that's what it is industrial and doesn't really have that punch that the other records have which brings me to number three Herzlide. although i think this one is industrial as well it's not as electronic driven as Zinsult. And this one is more brash, it's more rough. Uh, Till even said that he was gonna start singing more when Zinsult came out, because Herzlide was him mostly screaming and yelling, which is cool, I like that flair. I like how intense it is, how raw it is. And this is a very good debut album. I think this is probably one of the most solid debut albums. And we've got hard hitters with the industrial flair that works well. Voltier das Bettenflammenzehn, Asche zu Asche, Weißes Fleisch, all really good, powerful industrial songs without it being too electronic, which I think Zinzuk does at points. So this one is militant in a way. It kind of starts that formula that Rammstein has when they're making a song where it's just, you know, you gotta add a little bit of everything in there. And this one, I think, has some risks in it. There's solos, which don't happen very often in later records. And uh, yeah, it's got a flair to it. It's got a groundwork to it. You can see potential in it, and that's why I like this one a lot. And uh, whatever slack it has, you know, with songs like Hayra uh, Tomish, and I would say even Zimon is a little, you know, just kind of not as great as it could be, especially if you can compare it to other ballads like Clavia, even on Zinfel, you know, it's just, it's a little weak. But, uh, let's see what we got for notes here. Oh, yeah. So that brings us to number two, then. What Slack, the last records I've mentioned, had before um, the Untitled one came out. I think Liba is for all the docs succeeded. It's got the heaviness of Riza Riza. It's got the diversity frozen raw. It's got the freshness of Hurts the Light, and it's got the sauciness of Zinzold. If I didn't already say that, I said it again, because it's just that good. This record is some of the heaviest stuff that Rammstein's made, even the opener, Rom Light. It takes, like I said, their typical Rammstein opener formula and adds something to it. It feels very like a personal Rammstein song, not an industrial song, not a metal song, a Rammstein song. And obviously, that's what it's called in German. So anyway, um, yeah, they had a break after Rise of Rise and Rosenrod. They had a break after that tour. And I think it was needed to bring this to life. And that's what I think this one is so great, so lively. Even Vino Blut, you know, uh, fits in perfectly with Popa and Spiel mit mir, you know, the disturbing stuff. Buchstabu, probably their heaviest song, fits right in with Sistorin, it fits right in with Voltio Das Bett and Flamenzane. It's just a, a really good Rammstein album. It feels like a Rammstein album at their most poignant, at their most severe. That's even an adjective that we can use to describe it. But I love that album, and I think it could be potentially number one, but Rotorzond, uh, yeah, Rotorzond and Mare are kind of weak sauce, but you know, title track's good. Very heavy, Strudeve is good. Um, High Fish is cool, that could be better. Uh, Fooling in Paris is probably my favorite uh, ballad of theirs. I love that song. Um, but that brings us to number one. And why that one isn't number one is because Mutter is just so good. Mine hurts Stas. <laughs> I already started on that. Mine hurts Brent. I saw it for the, or I heard it for the first time in the Hellboy 2 trailer like 10 years ago, and I was like, you're mixing orchestra together with metal in such a way where it sounds so brutal. Love it. And so that brings us to just the whole, the half the album of singles. Half of it. 
actually more than half of it, I think. It's just singles. You got Fortify, you got Ishvil, you got Zona, which I love Zona. That's probably the first Rammstein song I heard where I was like, I need more of this. I, I especially like this album version just because I like the outro singing that uh, they have. And then, um, yeah, it's just got good stuff. It's all good. Even even the title track, which I don't like that much, um, it's pretty solid compared to like Fire and Vosser, which I hate that song. So, um, yeah, then we've got uh, my favorite song of Rammstein's, which is Spiel Uhr. It's just so dark, so depressing, and it's a great story, which I think Rammstein does best on this particular album, is tell really cool stories. That's always been the thing that has made Rammstein such a cool band for me, their storytelling ability. This one takes everything that you like about Rammstein and brings it to be a different breed, a different uh, arm, I guess. If you're getting in a fight with Rammstein, this is its strongest arm. It's different than the other ones, but it still punches you in the face, and that's what I love about it. <coughs> I made it worse when I did that. Anyway, um, yeah, Mutur is my number one for them. Uh, the last two tracks are underrated. Audios has got an amazing uh, guitar solo, and Enable uh, is, it means fog. Honestly makes me feel like I'm trapped in some fog, and it leaves me off with a nice high note to leave on. Um, so yeah, that's my list for Rammstein Studio album. This is my first video that I filmed, and I did it in one take because I don't like practicing. And uh, so yeah, if, it's, if you don't like it, then you don't have to watch it. Um, if you're like, why is this so bad? Because uh, it's the first one, and I'm still getting around to learning how it works for the most part. But uh, yeah, that's my list. Uh, what's your list? Tell me. And uh, you know, I'll probably do more rankings in the future. I don't expect anybody to really watch these. I'm making them for fun. And uh, so yeah, I enjoy making them. And I hope you enjoyed watching it. Anyway, see you next time. Stay heavy.